joining. Hey guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Happy Tuesday to y'all. Same to you. Same to you. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Everything cool. I can't complain. Awesome. You better crazy over here, but I don't know everything good. <laughs> Well, welcome to Plugged In. Thank you guys for joining me today. I'm really excited Thanks, to have you guys Thanks, here. Us. So we can jump right into this. So um, we'll welcome you. So Jabari and Nkosi, just making sure I pronounce your name correctly. Correct. All right. So everyone meet Jabari and Nkosi from LFS. Hello, Tell guys. us, Hello. what does LFS stand for in the brand name? LFS stands for loyalty plus focus equals success. So L, loyalty, F, focus. Uh, I love like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what country do you guys represent for the folks that don't know? Trinidad and Tobago. South Trinidad and Tobago. And um, Brooklyn, of course, because that's where we currently reside. Okay. So were you guys born in Trinidad? No, no. We were born. Both of us were born up here and then went back to Trinidad around two months old. And we lived there till we were, what, 14? Yeah, somewhere 14, yeah. What would you say are some of your fondest childhood memories, like in Trinidad? Five and plum tree. <laughs> Most fun ever, I feel I'll be spiking up from And that's it, the licks afterwards. But that's, that's life in general, that's having fun. Because we grew up in our community where, like, every other house was a family member. So we grew up around a lot of cousins and stuff like that, gospel. So just being around family members and just, I mean, boy, it is regular wildness stripping us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So tell everyone a little bit about your journey. How did you guys start? Um, In music in general? Um, yeah. Same time when we was in Trinidad, going to, I was going to Monrepo RC as a primary school. We both attended as San Fernando. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, I started writing music and singing Calypso. So that is where it started. I was um, performing in um, Calypso competitions and singing in school competitions. And he used to sing like backgrounds and stuff for me and do my um, backup singing and stuff like that in the um, competition. So that was the initial phase. Um, I guess we could go further back to even when parents playing Temptations and Bob Marley and these kind of things, Luther Vandross and stuff in the house. But um, as far as actually creating our own music, that was it, Calypso in um, primary school. Okay. And what is it like working with your sibling? Do you guys get along all the time? You know, how do you guys get through the decision-making process? Like, what is it like working with your brother? Um, <clears throat> I feel like nine times out of ten is, is pretty much the simplest thing because this person I've known for the longest of my life. Since I was born, he's been around, so... It's fun, but I know how to communicate with and how to I mean, get my points across to. So it's not really hard. We don't really argue, especially over music. That's something that we don't, <laughs> yeah, we like, we don't pick up over at all. That is the, we don't argue over music, period. Because it's pretty much just him trusting me and me trusting him. If he, mm -hmm. if he um, proposed something in a song to tweak or something like that, we try it and we listen to it and we, let live, we live with it for a little bit and then we move on and make the decision. I mean, so probably take so no one, music, So no yeah. one has the final say. <laughs> Nah, no. not really. Nah. Okay. And then if anything, okay. we have like a third party give our opinion, and then we'll we'll go with that one. Okay. And are you guys, you know, besties outside of this? So you guys are brothers. Do you guys hang out all the time, or do you guys kind of have separate lives? Um, I feel like everybody have their own lives. I guess they're their own little friends. But like all of our friends know each other for the most part. All of our close yeah. friends know each other, and we can all hang out yeah. together. So. Okay. Yeah, like this is, as I said, like he's been here for my whole life. I mean, I'll be a girl brother, so since I was born, he's been around, so, you know, so. And I never even think about it until he just posed the question and he was answering, like, or oh, I know for the most part, any of his important friends are my friends, but yeah, they really, you know, through him, via him. So even though he has his own group of friends, we all share the same community for the most part, yeah, because everybody just get along and everybody cool. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Now, LFS, the sound of LFS is has an R&B vibe. So why did you guys choose the lane of soca versus pursuing R&B full time? Um, there's a couple answers, a couple answers to that question. I feel like my mother always wanted us to start from home. So even when we started doing Calypso and then when we moved up here, he started to sing more like R&B stuff because he went to performing art school and things like that. So then we kind of went into that lane and stuff and we listened to so much different music living up here and stuff like that. that we get influenced by certain things, but when we decided to do the LFS music thing, it was a decision that we make to start at home and like, try to build a foundation with the soca music and stuff like that. And that's just what it is. So when you hear certain inflections, R&B or different kind of music in our um, soca music, it's just because it's not me, we kind of pre-programmed so and have it in our yeah. already. So 
Um, but Soka is, is like the home base, so like that is where we go up on Calypso, I should say, is the first thing that we ever really delve into. Okay, okay. And um, so Jabari, so I did some research on you and you've been singing for a while and you have a song by the name of Hey, which is a really, really beautiful song. Like Thank to be you. able to sing like that, you definitely have to kind of, you know, dig deep inside. That comes from a different place. So yeah. for you, um, specifically, like, what made you change direction? Because you definitely have that sound, especially after listening um, to the different R&B songs that you've done. Yeah, um, well, as, as you said, like, I was doing, when you came up here, I started doing R&B, and um, he was always writing songs. He writes songs for me and for other artists and stuff, and I feel like um, when the time came, like, we got to, well, he got tired of, I guess, shopping songs to certain artists, having to try to um, convince people, mm -hmm. you know I mean, of how good you think a song actually is. And um, he was always kind of the background guy. You see that up to now. Like, he was always, like, he wasn't really front line with, with certain things. I mean, so, um, and then when we decided to do some, like, we did with this one too, as a group. So that's how the elephant music thing came about with him writing and me singing. And, well, now us both singing. And, you know, um, we have a cousin, a DJ, Tunki, that was DJing for us. And, mm -hmm. Um, other cousin doing production, just like a really a group decision. I mean, first you just come together, and just attack this thing, and really go back home, as you said, um, and just start with soca music. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a special song. Yeah, yeah for sure. One of yes. my favorite songs, actually, like of mine. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's now in my thank catalog. You. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so do you think that you guys will be doing more R and B music, or are you gonna balance the two? You know, how do you plan on moving forward? I think that will be the plan to, to balance or to meld them. So kind of fuse and make some kind of fusion music where you get the, 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 the elements of both but, and the appreciation of both so people could, I mean, understand our background and, and appreciate how we could bring these two things together and still create music that everybody could, could vibe to. I mean, okay. probably, yeah, without a season, without carnival, because you see what right. we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And your sound is very uplifting. So most of your music, that's, you know, the type of vibe and energy that you guys give off. So you think you're ever going to do like a wine and jam down type of soca? Yeah. Um, it's just, we have, we, yeah. I feel like we do, a, well, I, not really a, a, I would say like a jab, jab or a jam soca, but we do songs that, I mean, for the ladies or for ladies to dance, mm -hmm. to dance to, but just yeah. also always have like a, a melody behind it. You know, we always try to yeah. do it. That's where we have the most fun with melodies and harmony. That's the kind of music we have fun making, you know. So I think even if we do songs that we like, we always have some type of harmony or something to actually listen to mm -hmm. other than just you know there yeah, jam and wind down <laughs> i could see us we could we could create a what is going like a, a direction song we telling this 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 but i can't see us performing it so i don't think we would really even go down that, that lane because the people who do that they had that unlock and this this is what they mm -hmm. do and i think like we yeah try to, we try to stay as true to ourselves as possible and we appreciate that kind of music but I think like us trying to make that music it might be a little bit forced, which is like the mm -hmm. direction song and kind of thing. We ain't had that in the package, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which artists like truly inspired you guys to pursue music? So it might be two different artists. So either one of you can go first. Oh, just one. I guess if I have to pick one, just one. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Um Inspire. We two do music. Not hard. That yeah. that because I listen to so much different, like since I was young, like we listened to, because growing up in Trinidad and listening to Calypso music and listening to Soka, and then when you come home, yeah, you listen to like Luther Vandross and The Temptations and all these different kind of I feel music. subconsciously is The Temptations. And I'll tell you Ooh. why, because when we used to listen to The Temptations growing up and stuff, like when you clean out the house for Christmas and all them kind of things, my mother just playing vinyls and things like that. We fall in love with the sound of The Temptations and then you watch mm -hmm. the movie and you realize the lifestyle and the, how much hours and practice went into the temptations and what they're doing. And then when we was around like 13, we used to form a fake group, right? This before LFS music, we had a group with mm -hmm. me, Jabari, and like two of our cousins, male cousins, and we used to try to do choreography and all of that. Kind of stuff. <laughs> but I feel like subconsciously, it was the temptations because we always liked that vibe of seeing people do something in in in, in coordination and uh -huh. yeah. and harmonies even yeah. with the music really dancing the music everything so i feel like yeah maybe temptation that was the first artist that i remember listening to and being like like fond of the, the wanted to make music yeah. yeah okay and do you have a favorite genre of music or maybe like two fave that you know that's your happy music 
It's into everything. Yeah, yeah that's a product. It's into every, like really everything, like yeah. soca, pop, some rock, country music, like folk music. As I say, every, like everything, like yeah, yeah. I, I, it's hard. It's hard to pick one, honestly. I feel like people who who don't like all kind of music will be annoyed listening. Say, no, when I call with me because my playlist will go from you two to Marshall Montana on my way to <laughs> like uh Jeezy song and Kanye song. So it's like yeah. it's all over the place. Like I listen to anything. It just I, I completely relate to that. I actually yeah. last night was going through my pop list mm -hmm. and I completely forgot there was like a whole bunch of like nineties and eighties pop that I haven't heard in so long that yeah. I had to like recreate the playlist. Like the real McCoy and mm -hmm. just so many you know pe um singers that people would probably be like Kara you actually listen to that and I'm like yeah, yeah exactly. like, this is good music you know <laughs> yeah when music touch you just you can't fight it like so I said, mm -hmm. good music that we you kind of not that we stay away from but I think like uh, people don't give the, the, the chance you know I mean in different art forms that's why I have real good music out there like plenty plenty a lot agreed completely mm -hmm. so let's touch on Trina Carnival um and so you guys released No Weapon in 2018 and mm -hmm. that was a massive massive hit and then you guys came with um started on the osaka rhythm that was with precision and mm -hmm. twin island um another great song and then you guys released it this year light it up so i know that you guys came to trinidad you guys did some press and so forth and then you guys kind of disappeared a little bit from the carnival scene so i know a lot of people were concerned and worried like you know what happened did you guys take a step back so I just kind of want to touch on what happened there because I know a lot of folks were having conversations like, are they okay? Because the social media wasn't as active and nobody really knew, you know, what, what happened with you guys. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that. I feel like, well, between Jabari and I, we had to really make a decision to like taper back and really focus in on certain things, certain stuff that was surrounding us, certain ways we were approaching releasing music and things of that nature and mm -hmm. really talking on it. I feel like plenty of people from the outside looking in though understand that if you don't have all your eggs in a row in the soca industry, things could become out of hand, it could become really stressful at points in time. So I think like we just needed to get like get our stuff together. After especially when we came down we would do the, the, the run and stuff like that and we had the song um ten out of ten which was on the um mm -hmm. on on what is that figure nine mine nine mine album rhythm and the it vortex rhythm and it was real vibes and time people was giving us plenty of feedback on the music and stuff but i feel like we personally and musically had to iron out some stuff so we just okay. say uh, we would just sit back for a little bit and play this one out and try to get our stuff together get get our mind a little rest and then come yeah back, you know I mean, on a, on that's that's definitely needed sometimes yeah. what do you think is one of the major challenges as a new artist um consistency consistency you say yeah that and um that and getting the right people to believe any stuff you're doing because you can always create music and stuff like that but for certain people to hear music you have to have certain um certain people to believe in your stuff at the same time too so just getting stuff to the right people but i think with consistency you could surpass all of them obstacles you know? so mm -hmm. just keep putting out music keep putting out music that you believe in and you're working hard on i feel like Correct. your bill up your bill up a, a fan base a people that fan want base. to hear yeah. it, regardless of what the masses may be whatever so exactly. consistency i understand why you say that yeah, yeah. Sure. what do you think you guys would like to see changed in our entertainment industry i feel like it, it i feel like it's taking the right steps in the right direction um because it has so much kind of us throughout the year now like carnival was just like a Trinidad thing. Like one time mm -hmm. a year, like everybody would just come and go crazy for carnival, and then you might hear soca until November, December, when it start to come back around. But now we have so much carnivals all over the place. Like it's becoming a really a year round thing, you know. And mm -hmm. I feel like, and the, the sound of soca itself is changing so much and improving. I, I guess you could say um, for certain people. So um, mm -hmm. branching out into many different yeah. directions, but they're not losing. I, I, I feel like people were afraid of. Soca music losing the essence because it was right. you know, plenty of different artists was trying to go different ways and experiment. But the essence of soca music still there. And I, I, li I like the fact that it branched you know, into certain things, but still keeping the roots. You know, I mean, intact. So yeah, I really the only thing I could see, I don't think I think like you said, everything flowing in the right direction. I mean, everything happens at its own time. We can't really force anything. So you think the music itself, the, the culture itself, growing, and we see it living in Brooklyn. We it have people who are on us never leave New York, never leave mm -hmm. Brooklyn, but know 
more soca artists know more soca music than they did 10 years ago. For sure. And yeah. understand the vibe and our culture a little bit more every year. Mm -hmm. it a little bit more. I talk about people who ne don't go to no soca parties, not even interested in lifestyle, but they're understanding it and, and appreciating it more. So I feel like over time, we'll get to where we want to be. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, you know, when you're outside and somebody who has heard soca for the first time or you're hearing someone tell a story that they've never been to a carnival and they experience a carnival for the first time. It's, it's just, it's really, really amazing mm -hmm. just listening to those stories because the excitement that they have, you know, the love that they feel for something, a lot of people have, are not even Caribbean. Yeah. And, you know, it really makes you feel proud as a Caribbean person to be like, wow, this is our culture. And they have, you know, embraced it and they love it as much as we do. So it really is an amazing thing. Yeah. I want to touch on the project that you guys did on uh, health. So you guys were delivering food to those in need during the pandemic. So, you know, did you guys get sponsors for that? How did you guys fund that? And what inspired that in initiative? Because I think that that was a really amazing initiative that you guys did. Well, uh, first and foremost, we want to um, shout out to Shana, our cousin who spearheaded it. She brought it to, we have a group chat for everything, mm -hmm. a million group chats, right. but she bring it to the table and um, whoever was interested in helping out with it, we put our names in the bucket and what we did was we just we didn't have any sponsors no companies were behind it what we did have was a few uh -huh. like our family members and then a few people who just saw it on on okay. social media and stuff like that and mm -hmm. made donations whether it was twenty dollars donation five dollars donation whatever it was and then outside of that we all just pulled money up the people in the group itself so we really okay. went and purchased these things for people oh, my cores are raising <laughs> yeah out of our own pockets you know what i mean within the, the people who donated we appreciate them so much but it wasn't any companies or any any uh, mm -hmm. bigger brands or anything. It was just really us. And when she brought the idea to the table, I was really proud of her because a lot of people see what's going on. We dealing with it as well because it's not like we're immune to feeling the effects of what happened with COVID, mm -hmm. so whether it be financially or whatever the scene may be. But um, it was something that we were able to do, and I was really happy that we were able to do it and um, we make it happen. So that was that was a blessing to, to help. Yeah, you. no, that that's really really awesome. So God bless you so, guys. So Sean, big up Sean, Sean. All the time. Yes, big up Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to think of one thing that you learned about yourself during the pandemic, what did you learn? So, I don't need to be outside. I <laughs> I honestly. Honestly, just being in my house, it's not about and being around family. Yeah, it, it's, it's not as bad as people crack it up. Yeah, I can understand people who in a house with somebody that they really care. Yeah, <laughs> that they yeah. Care about. I but think it's it's really I'm just chilling. the fact that the fact that um you're not you can't do things like you don't have the option to do things even if you don't want to do them or you don't really want to do them. It's just the freedom of having mm -hmm. to do these things is really what getting to people. I think, but yeah, being alone sometimes you need some some quality time or some alone time every once in a while. And I think that this what forced us to do that. Yeah. Okay. And at the beginning of the video, at the, my IG live, sorry, I was playing the song, Can You Hear Me, uh, which you guys recently did. So how did that come about? Um, it's a very touching song. I'm not sure if you guys actually got to see it playing at the beginning. I know a couple people were logged in. But, um, you know, how did that come about? And I know that some of the proceeds were going to bail bonds, if I'm not mistaken, for protesters and so on. Mm -hmm. All, yeah, everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, so just a, a next a next situation where we see a lot of people doing stuff, like going out there and protesting and stuff, and we did that as well. We went out there and we marched, and um, we were just trying to figure out how else that we could we could use our gifts, platform, our platform, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and our minds to help people as well. So we just we we went along with making a song. We had the help of KC from Precision. We had the help of Wildfire with um, the vocal engineering and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Kadeem from Tone Island. And all these people donated their, their, their work, their skill sets, and, you know, their time free of charge. So to have that and um, really just sit down and be able to etch out a song that we felt spoke to what was going on and spoke to people's plights and stuff like that, that was a blessing. And um, all the proceeds from, from that song will be going to the, um, the Brooklyn Bay of Fun and things of that nature. So that's how that came about. And that's just something, another thing that we try to do to, to, to effect some change or just leave our print on the current situation. How was it received? Like, how was the song received? How was, you know, the health project received by the public? Honestly, when we put out music, we got a lot of reaction from people on social media and stuff, whether it be DMs and messages. But as far as, like, our older family members, like, uncles, like, I have uncles and aunts that I don't even speak to on a regular basis. That yeah. I hear the song and call, like, 
Yeah. Uh. This one, I was like, <laughs> and I guess my mother said it to a bunch of people. I don't know how, but this song in particular, I speak to family members that I haven't spoken to in a long time. And I guess them here in this song, like it, it, it spoke to them and, and mm -hmm. it did. It was supposed to do so. That was um that was a blessing. That reaction was different than us putting out yeah, yeah. our, our um normal releases and things like that. Yeah, I'm telling you because when when I first heard it, literally it was one of those poor racing situations, and I was kind of like just glued watching the lyrics come on the video. Yeah. And it was it's it's a really really touching song. So I'm definitely gonna share it, and I will post it so that people, if you, those of you watching, you guys can go back to my story and you'll be able to check it out there as well. Stream it, stream it, stream it. <laughs> yes, stream it. <laughs> yeah, stream it. So we see all the racial tensions across the world and the injustices of black and brown people, you know, the murders of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, et cetera. Um, I want to know, you know, as black men living in America, how has this affected your mindset? And has this, is this the, you know, it made you propel to write and record and really push to give back to the cause? Like, is that what kind of, um, you know, in, 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 initiated that, sorry? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that was the mindset and the, 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 the train of thought. That the led to, it, yeah. to led to that. I mean, I mean, from since we growing up small, even in Trinidad, my mother always tell us that as black men, as young black boys, whatever it is, we have to be mindful of a lot of stuff. My mother was one of them mothers who, if she see we going out at ten and twelve, we virgins and things, she she automatically she had like that vibe. You know what I mean, she yeah. had to be two people or whatever you see maybe because she understand that that we see ourselves as just young boys trying to have fun and young mm -hmm. not enjoy yourself, but other people may not see that they see a, a gang of people or whatever they see you know because so, people see things differently and um so we grew up with that with the with the with the mindset and the knowledge of being mindful and knowing that not everybody out there had the same kind of love or had the same intentions yeah. intentions when they see you you understand what i'm saying and um, mm -hmm. just have to be real mindful that it's crazy that it's 2020 and these things happening still happening and people finally got coming together and fighting against it. At points, it was just one side of the defense fighting for, for equality and things around each other. It's a beautiful thing to see all these people come together. I just, it's just a sad thing to see what it had to go to or the lengths right. that you had to get to before things started to change. But, I mean, we don't control these things and all we can do is pray and just hope everybody... Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So there's a lot of people doing different things in terms of, you know, supporting black people around the world so jabari i heard that you recently got a tattoo um you want to tell us the, what the tattoo is and what was the most motivation behind it um well growing up um it always have a couple of people that really inspired me um black people um strong people that kind of went out of their way to um to fight for our cause you know to, to try to get us and our people at a better point and a more comfortable place in life so um i have martin luther king and i have Malcolm X tattooed on my leg right now. Um, it's not finished. I have to get a couple more faces. I don't want to see the faces I don't want to get yet. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to get some faces. And there's some quotes from, I guess my favorite quote from, from each person that mm -hmm. I put on my leg. So, um, yeah, there's some people that, that inspired me and, and showed me a kind of um, how to live life and how things are supposed to be an injustice, I guess, out here, you know? Yeah, so your next one again is O.J. Simpson. So, <laughs> 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 well, what were what are some of the quotes? Um, one or two that you probably will be um, um, using. Stand for nothing. Stand for um, nothing. Or fall for anything. Um, stand for something. You can fall for anything. Um, yeah. Then there's um. Um. Hmm. Now that's more thing. Um, it's a, a couple of quotes. Um, some are not really because I have so much favorite ones from some of the other people. Um, I have to just pick one because I can't get all these quotes. Mm -hmm. up, you know? But um, yeah, I have a couple of them that I want to get to, um, just to, my favorite one from somebody. I have to just pick them out and put them on my leg, you know? Right. And Kosi, do you have a favorite quote by anyone? Um, not that I could think of at the top of my head, no. I mean, I used to um, push this quote when I, when this back in the BBM days. I used to push <laughs> um, B Water. That was like, I was running with that. Ah, right? because yeah. Bruce Lee, yeah. Bruce Lee said, um, water is the only element or the only thing in the world that could conform mm -hmm. to it, it's um so yeah. then that situation is and i feel like that was a, a real impactful quote because sometimes you're in a situation where you feel uncomfortable but you have to be able to be water and conform adjust mm -hmm. i mean and be able to get out there so be water if only sad one without just that man but <laughs> some kind of credit yeah <laughs> and and Kosi, so you have a son correct yeah 
Yes. So if you had to leave a message, I have to wait, double check for a second there. If you had to leave a message for your son, what message would you want to leave for him? I feel like everything we've been discussing and all the stuff we've put out and things of that nature is a big message I'm trying to leave him. I mean, God, God forbid at some point he had to navigate this world without me being here. Mm -hmm. But I feel like all these things that we have done musically and initiatives wise with help and I can't you hear me. That's why I even put him on the beginning of Can You Hear Me if you're that's that's yeah. the at the beginning of the song. And even like um is a blessing I had him in the video because I want them to know that the things we, we try to get to the to, to mainstream and the things that we, we put our efforts and money and blood, sweat and tears behind was always things with our message and things that should positively affect people. So that would be the, the, the message I wanted to see that we always had thought behind everything that we do mm -hmm. in the so I mean if we talk okay. yeah. And do you guys prefer like large crowds to perform for, or do you guys prefer intimate settings? Big, I the big guy better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big crowds, yeah, the big guy better for sure. Yeah. Okay, I actually thought you guys might have said more intimate. You know, hmm. nah, right. but um, you song better, you did feel better. You know, when you hear when you hear so much people singing back your song, and it just I think that would be do it for you know to hear people actually enjoy mm -hmm. the music and. To get that kind of reaction is priceless. Yeah, because you have to kind of fine tune your performance for a more intimate crowd. And we like, because even when we do um, Patrice Strength of a Woman show, and I was like, because we opened crowd. up and we, we did a kind of intimate kind of thing. We do um, mm -hmm. no up an acoustic and thing. And then we transition mm -hmm. into the more um, um, DJ backed performance and stuff. But it, 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 each of them had a disadvantage, but big crowds is a vibe. Like just running yeah, out there. For and, sure. You know, I've seen thousands on top of thousands of people who just come to enjoy themselves and you task at that very moment you had the task of making sure that that yeah. <laughs> yeah it was worth yeah, it. Yeah, it's a challenge and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rush. What's your favorite part of a performance? Um, like you say, when we sing up to a certain point and we drop it, we drop the musical, we don't sing and just hearing people just reverberate sing and sing any lyrics back mm -hmm. to it. Like just knowing that the music connect that much, people, it have a space in somebody's mind. Like your music actually occupies that space in somebody's brain. They can remember the lyrics on on spot like that. That is that is a that is a blessing. It's yeah, a good feeling for sure. Yeah. Do you guys have a ritual like before you go on stage? Pray, pray. Yeah, as about it. None, none crazy. Just pray, thank God, hope for everything go good, and go there have fun. Yeah. Okay, so talking, speaking about big stages. If you could choose. Any stage, so let it be Coachella or you know whichever big stage, Marshall Monday big stage. If you could perform at any big stage show, which show would you want to perform at? Um, we didn't get to touch on Marshall Monday, so I guess I would say Marshall Monday. Me personally, because we haven't okay. gotten to do that, but I don't and know Jabari, it then. could be any you know it could be world anywhere around the world. Coachella was a good one that I say just now to um. But as as Marsha Mandu would definitely be a, a vibe, you know. Um, she has so much big, mm -hmm. like yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a lot. It could be a lot. Um, summer jam is a, a good stage. Um, it's a plenty of stuff that you could perform in. But um, it just once once the crowd, you know, give you that kind of energy, they make it worth it. But then say last last Marsha Mandu was the last one, not so? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. We missed that. We missed that train. And so we'll, we'll, you know, well, let's manifest Coachella. And yeah, you know, Burning Man and all these other soon. huge festivals. Yeah, sure. Something, some, some something, something coming soon. I mean, when yes. festivals exist again, because right now, it's yeah, it's none, correct. Yeah. Oh, someone said, I love Janelle, said, I love them even more. <laughs> <laughs> so, you both travel a lot. We've seen all the dope pictures on the gram. So, it's how do you question. determine? <laughs> how do you determine where you guys are going to go? And what has been like your? A lot of people can't pick one favorite destination. So, what were like the two most memorable places that you've gone to? Um, right now, top of the list is Thailand. Italy for me. And then that's on my bucket list. And then it's in yeah, Thailand. Yeah. Dope. You go to Thailand with two dollars and be straight up. <laughs> that was a good time to go to Thailand. <laughs> yeah, but land people in, but um, Thailand and then Italy. Italy was Italy was nice. The only thing. About Italy, that I want to redo it. When we went to Venice, we were moving on our strict schedule, so we didn't really get to relax in Venice. Enjoy, we, were just, yeah. mm -hmm. we were trying to go see this, go see this, go see this. I think we only stayed in Venice for a two days. Yeah, night, uh, two yeah. days and a night. We stayed in Rome. We was in Rome for like three days or something like that. So 
God spare life if we ever get to go back to Italy. Um, definitely stay a longer time in Venice, but Thailand and Ven uh, Italy. And how do you guys usually choose like your destination where you guys are going? Um, I think it just really take it. Um, probably see any right thing on Instagram or, or something and just do research much. and then, you know, when you research things and you see there's are things that you actually want to do and interested in doing and try to make it happen. Yeah, some people make okay. it, make it like, like, um, livelihoods off of doing travel vlogs on YouTube and I just, I contribute because I just watch all them vlogs on them. So that's why I choose where I would like to go. That's why watching vlogs and seeing people experience. Are you guys like similar or are you guys opposites? Like is one person more of an outdoors person and one person an indoor person? Like when you guys travel, do you guys find that you butt heads? Nah, I think we, for the most part, we're interested in the same things. Um, mm -hmm. Our personalities may differ. Yeah, I feel like he's more sociable than, than I am. Yeah, for like sure. I really like a little kind of reclusive in certain instances. Unless I know the people are around them, mm -hmm. they are full too. But most of the time, I kind of hold my corner. He are um, more sociable, more like the the light, the light party party kind of vibes. And on a certain that's so people, funny that you said that because I feel like I get a very shy vibe from Jabari, which is what I and wanted to ask next. <laughs> no, nah, it's not. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as you say, like it's important to who you are around, like yeah. people you know, because. If I run people I don't know, then it's kind of not really me being shy, but I just kind of dress back and, you know, yeah. watch the situation and know how people are. Because it's not some people that might not take my sense of humor or my personality, you know, how, you know, so you have to kind of dress back and really yeah. know how you could how you could joke with people and talk to certain people. So that's why I might just be, you know what I mean? And that's a double-edged sword too, because when you're holding your corner, certain people can look at you and think how you're, you're stuck stuck up up and, yeah, and yeah. Again, I get mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, we still show, but I'm not still sure, just that, I'm not friend. We're not friendly. Either. That's the next thing. Like we're not the most friendly people. Yeah, you're not gonna go above and beyond. No, you're not gonna go above and beyond. Yeah, correct. We're not gonna go out yeah. of way to you know to make you feel how you know. But yes, but yeah. we're not definitely not still sure stand off officially. Anyway. We very humble guys. Um, so mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to. Yes. I definitely get that energy, that you know, humility from you guys. From the first day that I met you guys, it was just you guys. As you said, you weren't overly friendly, but it was a very warm you know, pleasant interaction. And right. you can tell, like, you guys had that level of humility that was really admirable, you know? So. Yeah, and next thing too, you always show love. Any place we see it, no matter what country it is, what show it is, you always right. show love and check and make sure we good and think. Yeah, most sure. of the time, it's just me, me, me and Jabari just chilling out, holding me vibe. So I appreciate that. Every time we see it, I show love. And, I mean, sure. from day one. So. Of course. It's love. It's family. Hello. So, and Kosi, congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. Thank you. I want to touch on this. So as a performing artist, you know, there's a lot of conversations in the industry where it's really difficult to, you know, find the right partner, somebody that understands the travel schedule because you're on the road a lot, gig to gig, you know, minimal time for family and so on. So, you know, how did you know that this, you know, like, this is what I wanted to do. I want to get married to this person. Like, how did you know that that was the right person? Well, that was from before music because me and Chanel been together for what, like, a decade now, on and off. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, since I, we were both in college. We went to two different colleges, but mm -hmm. thanks to Facebook, it's lit. You understand? So we meet on Facebook, and then we just, over time, we just had the ups and the downs and the fallouts mm -hmm. and whatever the situation is. But like you say, we have a child together, and even before that, I knew that if this was the person I was going to marry, I was going to be out here single for the rest of my life. You know? <laughs> but, but so... It just be, it come a time where you feel like, all right, financially and in the, mm -hmm. everything is stable to the point where we could make this step and not just be jumping out there, just to be jumping out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where we are right now. So that's, that's all it was pretty much. So what advice would you give? So if a woman, in the, so if, let's say, so there's a woman that wants to date, you know, an artist or a DJ. What advice Bro, would you give to a woman? I can give nobody no advice. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I, you go with God. I, I that situation. Not me. <laughs> you know, you don't want to say something like you know, like just trust, trust your significant other, have patience. You know, something along those lines. I don't want to be the person vouching for I'm every a, artist and DJ out there. You go with God and figure that thing out. That's me. <laughs> All right, now, fair game. I, I mean, I just figured I would ask. You know, you could answer yeah, or not answer. Yeah, yeah. But you have the answer. Go on, God. Go on, God, yeah. Uh, Jab <laughs> Jabari, so are there any plans in the making for you? You know, big bro took the step. So anything yeah, happening for you? He, he, he three years older than me, so you have three. You know, we have a... a ah, we have some so, time. 
Yeah, correct. I'm a little three years to catch up. You know, I know you're not rushed right now. I definitely talk to somebody at the moment, but um, okay. no rush right now um, with, the, with the baby making or the wedding planning. <laughs> you know, but the time you did, you have to let those things flow, you know, and when it comes, when it happens, it will happen. Okay. I also get him to see talking to somebody. Yeah, and, and this, is, this is a full. So I never said before in my life. Yeah. You know, I love that I get the exclusives. You know, this yeah, is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I also heard through the grapevine that you guys um started biking and you guys completed uh hunt. Yeah, no, we're not going left. Yeah, yeah, me and Rebecca we're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys um, recently a completed a hundred miles um, biking thing, yeah. right? Yeah. So, is somebody planning for a race? Like, what is this all about? Because I heard that it, your mom, your dad, everyone was partaking in this, right? Yeah, yeah, since since we've been like since growing up, my father been big on bikes, like riding bikes in Trinidad, like doing marathons in Trinidad and stuff. So, um, with the whole Corona situation, we can't go to the gym. You know, would make it kind of hard for people to work out. So we just. And not really because of him, but we just decided to take a bite. And, um, and he didn't like, and he didn't much like much nothing better than that. Yeah, so that he was the reason for the 100 mile. Um, That's a great ride. way to bond. Yeah, yeah. He, I guess if you want to call it bonding, yeah, cool. Yeah, you call it that. <laughs> yeah, be a bond before and after because during the time of bonding, we I, don't, I don't want to talk to nobody while on the bike. Yeah, because, especially on 100 miles. Like when it hits 75, 80 miles, it's a problem. You know? Listen, I can't even do two miles. You talking about a hundred miles? You could, you could do two <laughs> miles, or you could you could do it. That's our faith in yourself. A hundred different for you. Jeez, but yeah. a little birdie told me that you guys haven't been back to the park since that. So what hey, happened? Tasha, right? I know that Tasha because Tasha, <laughs> we see Tasha every day in the park, but we didn't go back to the park as of yet because we have to let our bodies. My legs and I'm cover, Number one, and then you guys need an ice a ice bath. Yeah. yeah, we did do a yeah, we did do a ride for sure. We yeah. did a ride to the bike shop and back, and that's yeah. a couple miles. Yeah. You know, five but, mile ride. Yeah, yeah some like, but we have been back to the park. That is correct. Not yet, but okay. sometime this week though, hopefully. Okay, so what do you guys do for fun? Like outside of you know music and work, what what do you guys do for fun? What do you guys enjoy doing? Sports. Um, yeah. Used you you guys play sports? Yeah, I used to box back in the day, so just watching boxing and any kind of combat sports really. Yeah. yeah. Um. Basketball, if we have a chance to play basketball sometimes, you know. Um, yeah. But really, I like, guess family time is always like the most fun, mm -hmm. like laughing yeah. and hanging out with family and close friends. Like, that's the most fun. I don't get no better than that, honestly. Yeah. I, I have like an off interview question. So, I went boxing for the first time yesterday. Do you have any advice for me? Because I don't know if I want to go back, to be very honest. You went to boxing? Yeah, yeah. so I took a boxing. So, I'm, I started, my girlfriend has been trying to get me to go boxing. And mm -hmm. I went once a month and a half ago, and I never went back. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do this. And I'm in a lot of pain today. Mm -hmm. So I need some, like, you know, some advice to get through this because this boxing class situation is a little intense. You should keep it up because, like, boxing, when you're boxing, that's going to be the best shape you probably ever was in your life. Once you get to the point where you're in that tip top shape, but boxing is fun. I mean, it was always good to know how to defend yourself. And I mean, just mm -hmm. somebody play mad. And then, secondly, um, it's, it's good cardio, it's good, it's good, um, good exercise. I'm um, just your footwork is the most important thing. Your footing, so be mindful of your footing, and then other than that, just press down and yeah, and know, duck and run. Some, some people, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to like duck from left to right, so I don't get it. Yeah. So why why you didn't go back after the first time? What take you so long? What's I was really intimidated to be very honest. Like looking at so I went with my girlfriend and she boxes, and you know the other people that were there, they looked they knew what they were doing, and I kind of was like. Okay, am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. And it was an intense, it was an intense workout. So I think that intimidation and that fear of really getting in it. So when I went back yesterday, it was ten times worse than the first time. Um, but I left, I left feeling good. So I think I really need to kind of just get my mental right and say, yeah. you know, you got this. You can go do this. But I've heard really good things about it in terms of overall workout. And you know, I want to be able to kick somebody's butt if they try to hold me yeah, down. Yeah, so. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, there will stand. Instagram and thing, I can't be getting like so. Oh my gosh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Okay. Keep going. So, what place would you say you guys are the happiest? Hmm. Country or just in general? In general. With family, Gasparillo. So my cousins are actually from Gasparillo. Yeah, Gasparillo. They're gonna be better than that. To me, at least, I can only speak in Gaspolo with family, yeah, yeah, because that is you laugh till you cry. Yeah, like really. kind of environment, yeah. That is, that is it. And what is your guilty food pleasure? Someone told me that you guys cook 
And is that is this a true statement that they made? That was a yeah, that was a little um, adventure of ours. No, so but, uh, but I, I kind of you know quarantine bring plenty things out of people. Mm -hmm. So cooking was the uh, cooking was the, the top half for quarantine. Mm -hmm. Cycling is the second, the the second half. I can't even yeah, call it the second, second half so because yeah, we don't know when this is gonna be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, cycling it start off with with cooking. Um, but favorite food, I like Italian. So anything mm -hmm. calamari, like calamari is like okay. Food, so yeah. yeah. Lasagna, what about you, Jabari? Um, probably I'm not calamari, but lasagna. For sure. I can't eat shrimp. I just do shrimp. So um. So am I. I just yeah. found out. Yeah, me, me too. Like a couple years ago, I think they say immune system changes. Yeah, and, and I found out on Uber Soka Cruise when my throat closed. Uh, and, you, and I was like, oh, maybe I'm allergic. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but um, definitely pasta. I like lasagna and stuff like that too. For real, kid, what was that? Are you sure for that? Yeah, no, it was the um, it was a way. It's just fun. Calamari. Yeah, that should be yeah, calamari. Yeah, dead, yeah, you see that. Yeah. Who's going to be anybody who? Yeah, I, I, he, I yeah, he, he loves seafood, so. Yeah. God forbid that happened to him. Oh geez, yeah. Don't do not count on that at all. Yeah. Have, what's the funniest thing that has happened to you guys, either recently or just you know growing up? Like, I want to hear like a funny story. Um, don't find yourself in everything. Yeah, it's always something funny actually. Um, but I I would say the most fun I ever had on a trip was like a couple years ago. Like ten of us went to the Bahamas, right? Mm -hmm. And we all got these these mopeds over there and. Out of ten of us, I'd probably say eight of us crashed, and like I laughed in my back, like the most vomiting. Like that was the most fun I, I think I've had in my life. Like when most ever laughed in my life. When we break yeah. crash, and as he get up from the crash, you vomit. Like he crash and get up and vomit. Oh my god! Like, you know, somebody leg, like it was a big, like a very big deal. Like yeah, yeah. That, that that day was madness. So that was the most oh fun my I've had god! Because I didn't crash. I feel if I crash, I wouldn't be saying that. But I didn't yeah, crash, so it was definitely fun for me. <laughs> for sure. And if you guys had, if someone, like you walked outside today and someone handed you a check for $10 million, what is the first thing each of you would do? I would give five to my mother. Okay. Mummies. Yeah, yeah, I'll give five to my queen. I feel like million. I might get three. I mean, I want five, yeah, but five, <laughs> five is better. You might get three. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, get three. that's still a lot. <laughs> yeah, I still feel like exactly. I plenty still. Because, because if you get yeah. five, I think it's like two. And she could always know she could come back for more, but for more. five. That's it. Right. And if she that's comes back, yeah. Come she... come <laughs> yeah I mean, if I give you five million dollars, you should not be able to, you should want to come and ask you for more money. So if I get five, if I get three, like, all right, you should know that is it. You're cut, you're, you're done, your limit is, you know? Like it's good. a one time lump sum. Yeah, no, correct, no, no, yeah. you, might have, you might have to break it up because you know what our parents are. So you that's might have it. to do what he said. You might one. give 1.5, she come back for a two, and then she come back again. 200,000. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's into it. Five is yeah. too much to... Uh, set, I, so I'll you. set aside five for shooting. How about that? Right. I'll give okay. the table, I'll set aside five. Okay. And <laughs> what are you going to do at Kosi? A house. Because, I mean, that only works God's way like right now, but uh, mm -hmm. that's a house. No, not a, a, buying a house with money that I didn't have any possession to begin with. Not a few times. Okay. And what are your personal ambitions? Um... That's a, Plenty things that we yeah. want to manifest that we, we, we hope to accomplish in life and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a, a big, big question. Musically, I guess um, any soak artist was saying when in a soak or more, go get to the point where their where the name is synonymous, so right there with all the big acts in soak and music, I guess that would be, you know I mean, an accomplishment in itself. So. That'll be my answer musically. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too much things. Too much things that I guess. We have works. plenty life going on outside of music. Too, yeah, so mm -hmm. that, every every facet of life, you have different things that you want to achieve. You know, so yeah, but musically, yeah. that, will, that I guess that would be it. Yeah. Okay. And so before I ask the next question, I see someone put a question in the chat box. So I see some ladies in here as well. So if you guys have any questions, there's a chat box at the bottom with a question mark. So you can just go in there, pop in your question, and then I'll ask the guys just before we end off. Um, now I just completely forgot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> okay. What does legacy mean to you guys? Um, everything because... Yes, even a legacy is everything. I mean, to the point, legacy is... Uh, when you're gone, that is all you really... That is all you have to represent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X legacy is the reason why Jabari and them talk to you. Talk to you. Mm -hmm. like, so, legacy is, is everything. 
You have to be remembered. You have to be remembered for who you really were and not what people perceive you to be and things like that in life. So legacy is important. So what do you think you would want your legacy to be? Um, there's some beliefs who had um, a purpose. A purpose and mm -hmm. wanted to create music that could live beyond we years on this earth and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, that would be. And I always try to help people who are um, who in less fortunate situations than, than we were. The whole team, that's not us, just the entire LFS, I would like for people to remember us for trying to help people. I mean, you need the, the, the making the difficult decisions, you know, when other people might be scared to make these decisions, you know. Mm -hmm. so take your head out there to help other people or try to do the right thing when it might seem so right at the moment. Yeah, I love that. And if you could introduce um, our culture, so, you know, soca music and Caribbean food, to anyone in the world, so someone obviously that you know has never experienced this, who would you want to introduce it to, and why them? How much people never experienced? Honestly, so like a specific, so so for example, so I might say you know Barack Obama because yeah, I know, da -da 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 -da. I know the simple like a uh, uh, a name somebody that a lot of people could could yeah. uh, connect to recognize, but honestly, if I had one person. I talk about people that living around me that the same people I was referring to that never leave mm -hmm. New York Brooklyn. or America. Like, I would just love to see, I ain't gonna name the people, but I would love mm -hmm. to see these people in Trinidad, yeah. like on Carnival, like in the middle of Carnival. Well, I, just, sure. I would just like to yeah. sit down and just watch. I don't even have to be there. People join themselves. <laughs> yeah, experience it, because I know they're gonna just be on cloud nine, no pun intended. They're gonna be out of this world, like, that would, that would bring me more joy than seeing somebody famous experience it or somebody I have no connection to. I like, guess people that I know will enjoy it and just for some reason they just never take the, the, the time, the out, time out or the yeah. As much as we try to bring them because mm -hmm. offer everything from house to stay in. You have to worry about eating and everything. But I mean some people just stuck in stuck in their ways and some people just Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody you know. had their life to live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's next for you guys? Um, the EP, yeah, yeah, we're working. I mean, we already start recording stuff for like whatever season comes next. But as far as like we doing our project, we're working on our EP right now. So that is like really what well, most important to us right now, musically. Okay, so I like to have a little bit of fun. One of these things has to go. Are either of you vegetarian? No. Nah. Okay, so one of these things has to go: oxtail, saltfish, roti. Could be curry, curry chicken, could be curry goat, either one of those. And jerk chicken. One has to go? Yeah. Probably salt fish. And when you say salt fish, because it's probably thing out of all of those, you want to eat the least. I probably say salt fish or oxtail, boy. Nah, I feel oxtail, I have to go for it. Yeah, so one of, one of the, I'm, I'm saying no to salt fish. Like, oxtail cannot go. Yes, yeah, so it might be salt fish. We just gotta do it too often. So yeah. I don't really mess it that much. A bacon and salt fish. A salt fish it's and good. Salt fish and dumpling. It's good, mm -hmm. but it's not do it too often, you know? Yeah, I just, yeah. yeah. Oxtail yeah. could go. For me, oxtail could go because a salt fish and dumpling, you mm. can't top that on safety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could do it without oxtail, I mean. Yeah, salt fish for me. Okay. Yeah. I ask every one of my guests this question, so I'm going to give you guys two separate colors. So you have to describe this color to a blind person. So this person has never been able to see, so they have no idea what anything looks like. So Jabari, I would like you to describe the color red and Nkosi, describe the color blue to someone who is blind. Pardon? Why is blind? blind? So you have to think about I, it. Um, you, have, you have to, I, every one of my guests I ask this question and it's, it's a great question because it really gets into your mind. So. I'll give you a second. While you think about it, I'm going to look at these other questions that people put in. So Anita, think about how you... <laughs> Sorry? Blind since the was born? Yes, for oh, forever. <laughs> no, they have to use things that they know. So what do you do? They can't see nothing? Or what no, but yeah, but they have other senses. Blue, blue, blue. Because if I smell something, like I could think of something else because I've seen it before, you know, but if I never see anything, then... Because you'll never be able to paint the perfect picture, but if I had to explain blue to someone who never, <laughs> never had the, didn't have sight since I was born, I would tell them, like, like, breeze. When you feel breeze... Yes, yes. When you feel breeze, 
that is blue, like water. Mm -hmm. Like, because blue is a, you have to, you know, you have to give a color. Yeah, I feel it. I think what color? Yes, exactly. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. Water. And yeah, but are you sure about breeze blue? <laughs> I can explain black to them. If they give them black, I'll close. Okay. Like right now, we don't even have like to see black. They don't want to go see black. It has to be black. <laughs> You don't know what they'll see, or you have a sound like black. this? Right now, I'm black. Black. If it, if no, your eyes closed, I'm black. No, it's black. Because black people just have their eyes open. Exactly. I don't have to explain it. I feel this test because I don't know how to explain it. I need to ask a blind person. I have no idea how to explain it. What I'm explaining is uh, the essence of blue. <laughs> Oh yeah, my god. So okay, well, I feel this test because I don't know how you are. Where you are. <laughs> because I ain't never heard nobody ask nobody that. How would you explain red to a blind person? <laughs> okay, listen. This is why I'm literally in tears. This is why I asked this question because the answer, you just never know. But exactly what Nkosi said. So you kind of have to rethink it and figure out a sense that they can associate with. So exactly what you said, like blue would be, you know, the smell of the ocean or the breeze, like that would kind of, so you could be, red could be, you know, like when you get angry, like that's red, you know, like you see red or fire. that, yeah, fire. Like, you know, when you feel the warmth of fire, you know, like, so that, or the, the, no, the sun, yeah, the sun could maybe kind of. Yeah, when the sun directly on your skin, red. red. Or yes. It could, be, it could be orange too, that could be black also. <laughs> this stuff don't correct answer for this question. Yeah, so I feel. Oh, here I show. Yeah, yeah, here yeah. I, I don't mind feeling this test because this test is only feeling at the end. Yeah, because if you try, you would have passed. No, because if I try, but I see some even worse. See, someone said heat. Um, someone said this question is the best. <laughs> oh but, gosh. But have I ever seen blood before? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> there is no right answer. There isn't a right answer. There's no wrong answer. Oh my gosh! So one of the questions here is, um, which artists? Oh, which? Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Which artists would they like to work with? Um, a lot of people ask us this a lot. Um, yeah. honestly, at this point, who we work with? We work with Lerona because like Lero, almost like family. Like before we started doing music, we was working on music with Lero. So um. Mm -hmm. Anybody who come on is a genuine vibe. Yeah, that's the most important thing. You know, and, and the sometimes you might do a song and the song, you know, this person will bring another element or another level to the song. So mm -hmm. I don't want to pinpoint anybody, but anybody who have a genuine vibe when we are wrong yeah. and willing to work and stuff, we make music. That, yeah. That's a great answer. Yeah. Nalo said, always awesome listening to LFS. So humble and so inspiring. Proud to be a Trini. Agreed. I co-signed that statement. Bless, bless I want you to end this sentence. So you have to fill in, okay? Jabari, I have faith in you for this, okay? Yeah, there you go. I don't have okay. <laughs> so music makes me. So it doesn't have to be one word. You fill out the sentence. So music makes me. Live. Live. That's what you have to think about live. Okay. Because I, without music, I will be myself, like, at all. Like, I'm not just performing music without listening to music. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be able to make it through some situations I've been through in life, like music, pull me through a, a lot of things, being able to listen to music, write music, create music, so definitely mm -hmm. um, live, like music helps me live, for sure. Okay, beautiful. And Nkosi? Um, music, what is it, music makes me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, music makes me. I don't say happy because, but, um... And like hope. I said, it could be a full sentence. So music makes me feel like yeah, jumping off of a bridge. Word, like, hope. like music is cool. Because the same thing you said, there's certain times when music is the only thing that could carry you. So mm -hmm. if you're dealing with something without the assistance of outside people and you want to deal with it internally, music is, I mean, you can have to cope with a lot of different situations. But, okay. Yeah. Well, we have like two minutes before this live cuts off. Mm -hmm. So I will give you guys the opportunity, you know, if you want to leave a message with everyone that's watching, um, is there anything that you want to say to those that are viewing who will view this after that they may not know, or just, you know, a positive message that you want to leave with them? Uh, Wash all your hands, put on all your masks, when you're going outside, but social distance. So it is real. The COVID mm -hmm. is real. Yeah. It is not a game. Yeah, that real. Rona is out there. Back. Yeah, it's outside, like New Chan say. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, it's in here. It's in here. <laughs> yeah, I understand. So, shout out to everybody who um been rocking with us 
from the beginning. Shout out to anybody who's been rocking with us since, since yesterday. yesterday. Anybody uh, who's been rocking with us since this interview. Um, just uh, shout out to anybody who's given our music a chance. And, I mean, giving us the ears to listen to our projects. And, I mean, make some kind of impact on their life. So, blessings to everybody tuning in. And much love always. I hope all the continue to support. And, I mean, give us right. Thank you so much for having us too. You're very welcome. Thank you to everyone that tuned in for another week of Plugged In. I believe we are at week 18. Um, excited for, going. Yes, yeah, excited for all my new guests. So, you know, for those of you who have never seen the show, this show airs every Tuesday on my IG Live at 7 p.m. Um, so thank you guys for all watching. And to those watching, make sure you guys follow LFS Music, stream the music, support the boys. Um, you know, as you can see, they're very humble and easygoing. So I'm sure if you guys wanted to collaborate or connect, you guys can send them a DM. But make sure you guys follow and support the music, support the culture. Again, thank you guys for watching. Jabari and Kosi, thank you so much for being here today and taking Thanks time to spend it with me. And um, I look forward to what you guys are gonna, um, you know, what you guys are gonna release in the near future. Make sure you send it to me so that I can share it and we will be in touch. All right, stay safe everyone, stay blessed and we'll talk to you guys soon. Love, love, bye everybody. Bye.